Hey everybody, how are you hanging in there today? I wanted to share something with you today that I was thinking about when I took my morning walk this morning. I thought maybe it might be encouraging for some of you. I think it's important that we be able to identify the feelings that we're having right now about things that are going on and this came to my mind. So uh, I went to North Carolina a few years ago for a ministry conference. And I remember driving through the mountains and just feeling this sense of um, relaxation and I'd been renewed through the conference. And then um, my cell phone rang and it was Tom. And I figured he was just calling to see how I was doing, make sure I'd gotten away on time. I mean, I was feeling very much in control of my life and uh, free and easy and not worrying about anything. Um, but the next words that he said just stopped me in my tracks. And he said that um, Lauren's water had broken and she was in the hospital. Now our daughter Lauren was 25 weeks pregnant and she had an 18 month old daughter. And so when I first heard these words, I just, I, I felt kind of angry at Tom. Cause I was like, what are you talking about? She's only 25 weeks, this can't be happening. I mean, I just refused to believe what he was saying initially. I, have you ever done that? You just, you know, you hear something that's traumatic for you and your mind doesn't want to believe. But even though my mind was having a hard time catching up, um, I could feel my breath starting to tighten up and my stomach starting to knot, knot up. And the worst part of it was, I was in North Carolina, they were all in Houston, Texas, and there wasn't a darn thing I could do about any of it. Um, I couldn't make myself drive any faster without worrying about getting a ticket. I certainly couldn't make uh, the plane travel any faster. And I was, um, I was lucky, I was able to get an earlier flight, but even then, it seemed like it took forever to get home and I felt so helpless. I mean, there was nothing that I could do at this point to help my daughter except pray and try to stay focused. And you know, if you're a parent or um, whether you're not a parent or not, just when you love someone, you wanna protect them. And when you can't do anything, it makes you feel so helpless. I got home and um, that feeling even increased because I also realized that, that I was not the one making the decisions for her. Um, she was able to stay in the hospital for one week and then Avery was born at 26 weeks. And she was born right at two pounds. We were, you know, overjoyed that she was born, you know, everything went okay with the birth, but we also knew we had such a road ahead of her and ahead of us. And she was in the hospital for 81 days. You know, there were scary moments. There were things that the doctors were telling us that, that could happen as a result of her being that premature. Um, she stayed at a pound and a half for 10 days and that was very frightening. And, and she had some trouble um, initially with with eating and things, but she was spared a lot of the complications that a lot of preemies get. So don't get me wrong, we were, we were so appreciative of everything. But um, she spent the first 81 days of her life in a box. <laughs> I, I think it was one of the biggest lessons that I've ever had, it, the biggest lesson that I have ever had about the illusion of being in control and how we go through life thinking that we can plan and everything will turn out perfectly if we work hard enough or if we pray enough. And, and this illusion that we are actually in control of the bigger picture, but we're actually not. What we learned through that time, I watched my daughter and her husband just be courageous and brave and patient and continue to every day just show up, whether it was at the hospital to see little Avery or whether it was at home with their older daughter, Eloise. And I watched Avery in that tiny little incubator just be, she just was. And even today, she has the gift of authenticity. She just is who she is. There's no pretense about her. She says what's on her mind. 
she expresses her feelings freely and um, and she's just a real gift in that way the reason I share this story with you today is that I feel like uh, at this point of um, what we're trying to do uh, to be good citizens to love one another to respect each other's space to try to care for one another to stave off this um, COVID-19 virus to try to be good citizens. I, I feel like probably a lot of us are feeling a little bit helpless and maybe even a little bit frustrated because we can't do anything to rush it up or to change it. So I want to remind you that, that just as I felt in those days of uncertainty when Avery was first born and from the moment that Lauren's water break, I, I feel that kind of uncertainty now and yet I remember the way God met me in those tender places then. And my prayer is that you will be open to remembering that God meets you right where you are now in all those ragged places, whether you're anxious, whether you're bored, whether you're frustrated, whether you think this is all being overblown or whether you're so worried about the economy and what's going on. Those, All of those things we feel and we try to um, somehow regain some sort of sense of control over the situation when actually we actually don't have any control over the situation. But we do have control over how we will respond to it. And we do have control over if we'll be open to the strength that's available to us, uh, the encouragement that's available to us, and if we'll be open to the opportunities to learn through this. I want to remind you that you are created in the image of God and that, that there's nothing that surprises God about this. And that just as God created each one of us, God has a plan for all of us. And so in closing, I wanna read this to you and I'm, I'm hoping that you can meditate on it today and um, may it bring you comfort. So this is, uh, I'm gonna read part of Psalm 139. I'm, I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 18. I think if you've never read it before, it may be familiar to you, but if you haven't read it before, I think that you'll, you'll find that it brings comfort because it reminds us that we are created by a force, by a flow, by a source that is all-powerful, um, but yet so intimate and so involved with our lives. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Friends, you are with God in and through all of this. And while we may not see the easy solutions right now, we can trust that God will make that path through and that we can do it together. God bless you, and remember you are loved by the Creator God. You are redeemed in the Christ Jesus, and you are empowered by the Holy Spirit to hang on 
and to keep going. God bless you and go in peace.